did uh, call about your house a little bit earlier. Yes. And uh, she indicated, I think at the time I suggested that the best thing for her uh, or you might be to have um, have the property placed in a trust and uh, have her come in and uh, take over 100% of all the payments. And, she, pardon? Well, she, she, she would take all the payments, correct? Oh, yeah, sure. What, what she needs to know, and I think she's probably already ascertained it, if you're willing to keep the current financing in place for a little while, and if you can afford to leave uh, any equity intact, if you have any equity in it, then what she'll do is pay all of the payments, cover all the costs and maintenance and repairs and everything for a couple of years, and at the end of that time, she'll go ahead and pay off the loan and pay you back any equity that you owe. In the meantime, you're just out of it completely, and she's, she takes over as if she were the owner of the property. Well, uh... I would have to, it would pay my, uh, my $36,000 Well, she'd probably pay you more than that. Looks like right now your monthly payments are about $2,600 a month, right? Oh, no, 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 but just for rent, or that money would go to a theater. Uh, well, that'd be up to you. I would suggest that she'd probably be paying at least $2,600, $2,700 a month, and she'll also be paying all the property tax and the insurance and, and yeah, the... Yeah, what about the theater in my... Well, that would be up to you as to how much you wanted to charge, what kind of a percentage rate you wanted on that. So she will pay you the all. Are this person serious? Is she has any problem? Is she has any financial problem? It looks like she, she has no money. Is she going to put all that? Well, it's not that. She's got me as a, as a partner, and uh, the money is not a problem, but, but we own a lot of investment property, so we don't want to have to go out and get loans. What we'd rather do. Oh, you guys invest. Yeah, we're investors, and what we would do uh, is have the property held in a trust for you so that you don't have to take any chances, you don't have to grant us the, the title of the property or anything until we refinance, and then at that time, then we'll go ahead and pay off your loan, pay you back all the equity that you've been carrying. But in the meantime, you know, as far as we're concerned, we're, we're going to be considering ourselves owners, even though we won't actually have the title of the property for another couple of years. What are you going to do with the property? No, we'll put a partner in it, and the partner will uh, will make all the payments to us, and our job is to guarantee their performance. We will not rent it to anybody. We want to put somebody in and give them a percentage of our beneficial interest so that they have the, uh, and so that they have a pride of ownership. And the price of now is going to be established today, correct? Yeah, we'll, we'll establish the price today, and then you establish uh, from that how much equity you have, and what kind of an interest rate you want on it. And the only thing we would subtract from the price, and maybe nothing, would be, you know, if it needs repairs and refurbishments and so forth, and uh, maybe our own marketing expenses or something. But we're not going to negotiate on price. Whatever you say is the way it is. Yeah. Well, uh, I would have to speak to my account. You know, yeah, I would have to well, speak to you. Sure, John. Uh, Make sure that you understand that we're not trying to get you to make a decision, but you're gonna, you got a lot of stuff to do before you can make a decision. We've got to make sure that you see our offer. We've got to make sure that you understand the way we do business and uh, take a look at the trust. We, is, what's your last name, John? Should be. What is your last name? Should be like, What we would be doing right off the bat is just to protect you uh, is put the property in the John Spina Trust and then that way the title can be held by the trust so that you don't have to transfer any title to us. As long as we can do it that way and end up with some tax benefits and the possibility that we might take money. What is my beneficial of to you? What are going to be the fixed price? Well, you get a full price offer. You get uh, uh, monthly, yeah. you get a monthly payment on your uh, on your equity. You've gotten rid of the property. You don't have to worry about it. It's out of you know it's gone. It's sold as far as we're concerned. And then uh, you don't have. I would, to... I would get. I would get uh, the interest in, in, in money. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Sure. No, it's it's just a, it's a it's just a very safe and effective way for you to sell the property without taking any risks, any legal risks, or any chances on somebody. And what would happen is we're treated as owners because we get some because it's in the trust we get some tax write off and so forth. But if there was ever a problem in payment, we would be evicted as tenants. So it's just a new, um, it's a new process, a new legal process that's designed to, to protect.
protect people who are carrying paper from all of the problems that normally come up. So you don't have to take any chances with somebody on that. So before you ever make a decision, you're going to look at the documentation. You're going to, you're going to have to see some printed material and, and have plenty of stuff to take to your return. What, 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 well, right now the uh, the going rate is probably around five or six percent, and you know, but it's up to you. It's up to you to decide what percentage of interest you want. Yeah. And we're not going to argue with that. If it's too high, we just won't do it. If it's if it's too low, well, uh, we'll tell you that you ought to raise it a little bit. Yeah. Because what, what we're up to is just total and complete. Um, Fairness for everybody. If it's not fair for well, you, it's not fair for us. When you say the end, it means sit down right now. Uh, we have a few thousand dollars. Hey, you can check it out. Okay. How much do you owe on it right now? Well, I'm on. Uh, well, I'm on. Uh, let me see. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Oh, well, then you've got two hundred and fifty and one sixty-eight. We. Three fifty, three eighty-eight, three hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars in equity. Okay. So what we would be doing then is paying you interest on the three hundred and eighty-eight thousand in equity. So you would be paying the first the mortgage off at twenty-five towards twenty-six hundred a month, and then we'd be paying interest on your uh, on your equity. Yeah. And we'd probably set that up at six percent, amortized over thirty years with a full payoff. At the end do of the you, Do you have a formula where you can trust to me? Or? Sure, absolutely. You, you have the formula, are you very good in there? You got your HP number. If you want to trust to me, why don't you trust Well, I won't be able to do that. I think we'll be able to do that tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, be, let me tell you right now what it would be. If you got 300 and, let's say it's 368,000 in equity. And I want to get it, I want to get it zero money, right? No, no, that's not true. Five percent for 30 years. That means that the monthly payment to you on top of the first mortgage, wait a minute, I just did that wrong, hang on, this is a minute, three, eight, and three, eight, and six, eight, and five percent for 30 years. That means that we'd be making a payment of 25 to 2600 on the first mortgage, and then another two thousand dollars a month to you. Okay. Now again, you know it doesn't have to be that much. You might want to do some different things. We might, you know, if there's like this. If you say it's worth five sixty-eight, I don't have any reason to believe that it's not. Yeah. Well, how did you come about that figure from my Well, now uh, this was just try to try to that out, you know. What is it? Uh, well, uh, try to that out for a reason.
financing in place for a while, and who could afford to leave their equity intact while we come in and take over 100% of all the responsibilities and payments and maintenance and repair and everything for a couple of years, and at the end of which time, then we go ahead and uh, refinance the property, uh, pay off your loan, pay back any equity you have. And uh, yes, the best thing to do, if you could give Linda a call at area code 805 382 Let me repeat that. That's 805 382 And it's Linda Conway. And then she can set up another conference call with you and she and me uh, at your convenience. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry about that. Well, what I want you to think about, though, in the meantime, is what you end up with in cash, and if it's 
uh, they don't lose a lot of money, just don't forget some of the potential. Okay, now we get our phone. 
saying, just just to get my money right away. How much money do you need to get out? Well, I'm purchasing it for one hundred five, and I spent like a hundred fifty, so ten thousand dollars, you know, pretty much above what I paid for. And the cost is also one forty in that neighborhood, and the house is, you know. Well, where is the uh, where's the property? It's in uh, San Bernardino. Oh, okay, sure. On Windsor Drive. Yeah, that's it. And it's worth about what did you say, six fifty? One. No. One fifty. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. Well, the cost for one forty. And when I when I touched my Bank of America loan, they they went out and appraised them at one twenty four. I think my low purchase price for one hundred five kind of influenced the, their appraisal a little bit. Sure. But yeah, that's the story. So right now you like one fifteen? Yeah, I think one fifteen. So you've only got ten thousand equity in it. No, I have uh, nineteen thousand equity. Nineteen. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, my purchase agreement for one hundred five. And it's appraised at 124 right now. So well, I guess, I, yeah, I think there's a couple of things that we could do, Joe, that might really benefit you. One of them is we can come in for a full price offer, whatever you're asking for, so we can preserve your $19,000 equity, so you don't have to spend it on something else. You don't have to spend it on real estate commissions and closing costs and refurbishment and all that. Are you any work? No, no, it's free. I mean, you can get the paint job, Okay, work. so maybe $1,500 for paint job inside now? Right. Okay. Well, I think that we could do something. The only thing that we need you to do is is uh, just let us know how much cash you could get by with up front, and then uh, let us come in and take over all of your loan payments for a couple of years, and at the end of that time, then we'll go ahead and refinance the property, put a new loan on it, and, um, and just pay you back any equity that you've been carrying. No, right. I was more looking just like pretty much throwing my purchase the young man over but I guess that's fine that was coming up. For how much? For the, like the 10000 above. Well, we could give you 10000 for your purchase agreement if that's what you need. That's what I would like to do. And then, I okay. already got escrow open and everything. So pretty much I'm just looking for somebody to buy my purchase agreement off, off me. Oh, in other words, you're going to flip a property. You bought the property as an investor, and you're looking to flip it to another investor? Yeah, say it like that. Like, well, if that's the case, that might be possible. Uh, we wouldn't want to go as a, on a flip property. We're probably not going to uh, want to go more than 75 or 80 percent of the value, though. But I don't know that we couldn't give you what you're looking for. Right. Well, whose yeah. name is the loan in right now? It's in other person's names. Are they are they willing to keep the the financing in place? Or no, because the whole deal was him and me, and I was supposed to just buy the house. And then, because he, he only owes like ninety two thousand on it, and he's supposed to be getting the ten thousand dollars or whatever back okay. after after his loan gets paid off. <clears throat> All right, let me see if I got this right. Now, you came and bought the property. You're planning to put a new loan on it. If you don't find somebody to buy it off, you're going to put a loan on it in your name. That, that was my original intention to just buying it, and after just paying closing costs and stuff, and then reselling it. I would just sell my purchase agreement to somebody. Well, then yeah, I, I think there's a better thing for you to do, though, if you don't mind me saying so. No, no, no. What I, I teach uh, real estate investing. I, I'm a real estate consultant. Okay. And what I would do in a situation like yours, I might consider, if you were one of my students or one of my clients that I was doing some counseling for, or some yeah. I was doing consulting for, what I might suggest that you do, instead of selling out so cheap, is let somebody, even like Jesse, for example, let him come in and part property with you. And then uh, leave the this financing in place. In other words, if you can get the loan in your name, get the loan in your name, bring Jesse in as a partner in the property. And he comes in, let's say that you want 120, what did you say, 124? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, he comes in, everything under that belongs to you. So you've got 19,000 equity. And then he would agree that everything over that, uh, he'll market the property, put a resident beneficiary in the property, somebody else to cover all the payments, maintenance, repair, upkeep, probably get a positive cash flow, and then his share would be 50% of everything over the 119 in, in a couple of years. That way you get your 19000 now plus 50% of the future appreciation while somebody else is paying on the bill, you don't have any expenses at all on the property. Now, who's going to get all the closing costs and stuff? Well, he would, yeah, he would do that. Jesse would do that. You pay everything for my loan up front. Wouldn't cost you, yeah, it wouldn't cost you a penny. He'll pay for the loan fee to get your loan in place. He'll pay the closing costs and any other ancillary expenses that are involved. But what if 
the house never sells up, what if he can't get rid of it? Oh, what? You mean in five years from now? Right. Well, that's pretty unlikely, but if he couldn't, then he'd lose his 50%, and you don't own it all. In other words, he'd just lose everything that he's got invested. But you don't have any risk. I do. So you probably want to set it up for three, four, five years, and at the end of that time, we guarantee that you're not going to have any trouble making plenty of profit on it. And as far as a quick sale, that just depends on what you're asking for. Right. Yeah, we've done, you know, a few hundreds of these properties like this, and the system that we use is works extremely well. So you're I, not one of the grand, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm Bill Gatton. Uh, I'm much better looking than Ron the Grand. <laughs> Well, I'm just trying to get like five or ten grand like this right now. You guys can do whatever you want. Well, that's what I'm saying is what you could do is this. We would be happy to come in. Let's presume that Jesse and I are partners. We're not because Jesse's going to be doing it. I'm his consultant and his teacher and what have you, but Jesse yeah. the investor. So we, we would come in like this and we'd say, okay, uh, Joe, here's what we're going to do. You get the loan in your name. We will cover 100% of all of the expenses. We'll cover everything. And when all the smoke is there, we'll get $5,000. And now that leaves you $14,000 of equity. From this point on, let's partner on this thing and see how much we can make by putting another partner in the property to make all the payments, handle all the upkeep and repairs and expenses. And then at the end of three years, when the property's had a chance to get some appreciation, right. and when we've had a chance to pay that loan down, now we'll sell the property. You've got the five thousand already that you took out front. Plus, you give me another fourteen thousand, plus fifty percent of a hundred uh, of all of the positive cash flow that's come in over the last three years, plus fifty percent of all the appreciation, and fifty percent of all of the principal reduction from the uh, the equity buildup in the mortgage loan. So, pretty much at closing, I you pay all the closing costs, and I have five thousand dollars. In my hand right then? We would pay all of the closing costs and hand you $5,000 and you would still have $14,000. Yeah, I would do that, no problem. Let's do it. When can we get together? Today? Well, uh, how about... I work, um, I own my restaurant, and I work all day for 8 o'clock, um, Monday through Saturday. Well, let me ask Jesse what's good. Can you meet uh, with Joe tomorrow or the next day, Jesse? It'll be all right. What's the, what's the best time for you, Joe? We'll just make Jesse do it. Well, anytime before like 10 in the morning or anytime after 9 at night. How about tomorrow morning? That's fine. Okay, 9 o'clock. Well, you can call Springs, right? Oh, no. no, no. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Can you meet him at 9 o'clock in Palm Springs? Okay. Are you sure? Because you can do it the next day if you want to. Okay, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, Palm Springs. Uh, let me get for Jesse uh, where you guys are going to meet. Okay. Okay. Give me the address. Okay, it's going to be at 68100. 68100. Ramon Road. R A M O N. Road. Yep, that's in Cathedral City. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. What's the, oh, what's the name of the restaurant? Uh, it's called Charlie Pizza. It's D I A R L A S. C I A R L A S. Yeah, that's my last name. Charles. Okay, so it's Joe Charles. Yeah. Okay. And it's on the corner of Landau, L A N D A U. Uh huh. Martin. So pretty much, if you take the 10 freeway east from you know, your way, get off that State Farm exit. Okay. You make a right. So it's down about two miles. You're going to hit Ramon. You take a right on Ramon. And then one mile on the right is on the right hand side. It's like a little shopping plaza. Okay. We've got it. All right, Joe. Um, we will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Okay. Are you going to be there, too? Hang on just a second. Uh, okay. What's the phone number for the restaurant? It's 318 
Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear that? He
In other words, well, the, trust, the trust itself would take title. No, the trustee for the trust would take title. It works like an escrow. It's like no, no, I don't. I would be interested in doing it on that basis. Well, we could do it on another basis. But, but, but I think after you analyze what it is we do, you probably wouldn't want to do it on another basis. But that's okay. I mean, you're the you're the one who calls the shots. All we're interested in doing is getting the profit and making a profit on it someday. Well, uh, I'd be interested in hearing more about it. Sure. Well, let me kind of, if you, do you have a minute? Sure. Uh, let me kind of explore the issue of who owns the property. Basically what happens um, in a land trust ban is you are the owner, but the property is held by the trustee in the land trust, which is a non-profit corporation. It's got to be a bank and trust company, or it's got to be a trade <coughs> trust company to hold the title. And the reason you do that is so that you don't have to worry about Jeff ever doing something wrong or untoward in any way. And by the same time, he doesn't know you either, so he doesn't have to worry about you as long as the, the, uh, the title the property is held temporarily by a third party. It's just like holding the property in an escrow. So at the end of that period of time, you, you get whatever you're owed, and he gets the profit if he can make any profit on the, the resale or refinance. But in the meantime, you have 100% control. He can't do anything to the property without your permission. And he doesn't have to worry about you going out and refinancing it and not telling him about it or getting uh, liens or, or tax liens or something against you that could attach to the property. So what we do is we hold the property in that trust so that it can become completely immune to any kind of litigation, tax liens, bankruptcies, marital disputes, or anything else. So I think after you analyze what it is we do, then you'd say, that's what I should do with 100% of all the property that I own. But that means you would be happy to come in and take on back for a lease option or anything to do it. That's not a bad look for, from your standpoint. And how much money uh, we're down? Well, that's up to you. I understand the property's free and clear? Yeah. Well, there's two ways to go on that. Jeff would come in and probably get a 60-65% loan if he could carry the rest and pay you all of that cash. Or, but the problem in doing that, of course, is that if you do that, then you're going to have to grant the time to him, and that imposes the capital gains tax for you. The best thing to do, I think, would be for uh, Jeff to get the loan in your name so that there's no transfer of title at all, and you don't have any capital gains considerations at all. And then instead of carrying 35 or 40 percent, you're only carrying 20 percent, and you're getting 80 percent of the value uh, in cash while Jeff pays all the payments. And how much cash did Jeff put in? Well, he's going to be covering all of the closing costs. He's going to be covering all the costs of marketing to his partner who will be living in the property and making the payments and so forth. So it depends on what it's going to cost him. Is there any refurbishment to do? Yeah. But what he's going to be putting in would be anything that constitutes closing costs, and he's going to be going on the hook, of course, for the loan. But he's looking to come into the property without having to expend his cash up front. That's why he's willing to give you full value for the property rather than negotiating it down there. Uh, no, I don't think I'm interested in this arrangement. That's quite all right, then. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good try, though. <laughs>
Okay, so you got sixty thousand invested in it. Yeah, we just added up then. Okay, how much do you owe on it? I think um uh, maybe a hundred billion. Okay, so you got plenty of equity in it. Yeah. So my husband has an answer. Okay, have you have you had an appraisal on it or any uh, comparative part? No, never. Because you know what it is. Okay. Well what we would want to do in West Hills, uh, especially we want to run some comparable uh, uh, research on it so we can figure out what it's really worth as far as square footage and all of the amenities that you have and so forth. And then we would come in and want to make, you know, as close to a full price offer as we can. Does it need any work now? No, nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing anything. Okay. Okay. And super. And uh, our payments would be... And you were to take like twenty or thirty thousand dollars up front. Yes, okay. I'll take ten. Because it was a living. Oh, where are you headed? Um, I'm going to sing. I'm starting from sing. Oh, good for you. Mm -hmm. So I think. So you better hurry up because another friend on the bridge. Um, I I told him about it. Oh, we're going to the next one. You know, you know, we don't. Well, to be honest with you, Lucy, I don't think anyone's going to come close to offering as as no, much. No, I, I I have a lot.
final decision of the Park Company. I just want to make sure he understands perfectly what we're suggesting so that I don't go away half cocked. Right. And see, what we're suggesting is not that you, you take any risk. We don't want you to give us the title to the property. We want you to, we want to put the property in a trust in your name so that we don't have to ever worry about it and you don't have to worry about us. The risk factor is pretty much eliminated in terms of my getting any kinds of liens or suits or judgments or ending up in a divorce that could affect the property or even IRS tax liens can't affect the property oh, as, as long as it's in a trust. Right, I know, because I do commercial lending and basically people just, you know, there's any tax liens there. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way we do it, there can't be any. Uh, against the property. If I got if I got a lien against me, it would have to go against some other asset, but never the property in the trust. So we're not looking for you to transfer the title or take any chances or to sell for less. We're just, you know, looking for an opportunity that benefits both parties. But if it's if you know now that it's definitely not something you want to consider, then there is, you know. Yeah, you know what I I, I have people in work in the house. Yeah. That we're very